Welcome to the MuseCast, where we squeeze every last drop of inspiration out of Sunday's sermon. We got the thumbs up. We got the lean back in the chair. We got Dan Kent in the same location. Um, I'm just going to bring up every week for a while now how I love our local community more than Dan does because I don't try to escape you guys. I stay here and I stick it out in the, I think it was negative seven when I was taking my kids to school this morning. So, um, yeah. yeah. Yes. I, I, I have nothing, I have nothing to say. I'm doing good. Uh Um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, uh, it was not negative seven here, but, uh, Mm. you know, you are building character. And I think that's yeah. a good thing. That is a good thing. My reward will be great. I'm certain <laughs> of it. I'm yes. certain of it. <laughs> well, yeah. happy Tuesday, everyone. Welcome to the MuseCast. That gentleman is Dan Kent, looking nice with a nice little glow about him because he's in the sunshine. Um, I'm Shauna Boren, and I probably look like I'm frozen because I probably literally am. <laughs> At any rate, we're so glad that you're here. Glad to be having this conversation. We started a new series, which is just like, what? Crazy. I'm so excited. Unraveling truth. And so Greg, I really appreciated the way that Greg picked off this series by like giving us all of that buildup as to like why we're doing this and some of the questions that come our way and well, not just our way. Like these are just pe- th- questions and situations and issues that people have been struggling and dealing with. And so it's going to be really good. Um, I know Dan is already prepping for his part in the, in this series. Yeah. I'm excited to hear it. But before all of that, we have to kind of deal with week one. And that was the intro. And that was hitting bottom. Yes. Question yep. mark. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Bottom. Right. Yeah, yeah. We're kicking off a new series. It's a series I'm very excited about. And uh, Greg really, you know, we, it, it's interesting because we actually started this series in 2020. And it was in March of 2020. And we had week one, Greg came out, gave a great sermon. And then COVID hit. I was supposed to preach uh, on science and theology. And like on Tuesday, they said, you know, forget it. We're, we're, we're not, we're, we have to go a different direction because of COVID. And so we totally like blew up the series, just left it dangling there uh, for, you know, almost three years. It's been just waiting in the ether for COVID to, you know, change. And, uh, and now we're, we're back at it again. And it's so exciting to be back at it. Greg just started over and I'm so glad he did because uh, he, 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 I thought, gave us just a great, great sermon. Uh, in fact, in, in looking back at the 2021, I think this one was better than than what he did then. So uh, I, I, I thought it was fantastic. So basically, the series is called Unraveling Truth. And the idea of the series is just kind of looking at why, uh, why are so many people leaving the faith? And, um, you know, like, what are the what are the forces pushing people away from church, from Christianity and and so forth? And um, and, and this one of the popular things right now that people talk about, they talk about deconstructing. They're deconstructing their faith. And and uh, and that, that sounds like a, a fancy uh, kind of deep philosophical type of thing, but it's really just thinking through your beliefs and thinking through why you believe what you believe. And, um, and, and I think it's good that people ask those questions and wrestle with why they, they believe what they believe. And, um, and so we definitely encourage that. And, you know, Greg, he, uh, kind of looked at some of the the big kind of challenges that people have. He just kind of mentioned some of the things that we're going to talk about in the series, things like the problem of evil, uh, the just the horrible history of the church, the um, uh, you know patriarchy in the church, science and theology, uh, all of that type of stuff, all of those kind of things that push people away. And um, and he just said, look, these are things that we have to wrestle with in a real way. And he he refers to First uh, Peter three fifteen, where Peter tells us to always be ready to have a reason or to have a defense for why you believe what you believe. And so uh, we absolutely think that's that's a good thing to examine our beliefs on a, a critical kind of in a critical way. Um, 
And but I mean, there's just so many different issues. There's so many different things. And the question is, is like, where do you what do you deconstruct down to? Like, what do you what's the what's the end result? Because it's it's easy to um, to be just critical, to just have a critical or to be cynical and um, and to label that for yourself as deconstruction uh when in reality you're just really critical and uh and and so crit, being critical for the sake of being critical doesn't do anyone any good and so the question is is what's the what's the end result of this and and so greg kind of titled his sermon hitting bottom and and he just said for him when he deconstructs his belief he has these foundations that he that he comes to uh, time and time again. Um, and so he just looked at each one of those and there's these four foundations. And the first one, uh, the first foundation is love. And he just said, it's just this peculiar thing that humans have this desire, this, this uh, hunger for purpose and meaning and love. And, uh, and it's just, it would just be really odd if there wasn't purpose, meaning and love because everything else that we have this deep, inherent hunger or desire for there's something in creation that provides that need so when we are thirsty we have water and when we are hungry there's food and um and so you know it would just be really weird if if we hungered for meaning and there wasn't any it would be very odd um and so what he says is that that makes him believe that there is this bigger purpose and that purpose has to do with love and that leads to his second kind of foundation which is that if there is this purpose well then purpose by definition involves intention and so there must be a purposer uh that is there has to be a source of this purpose and since the purpose is love that ultimate kind of source of purpose must be relational and then that leads to his third foundation, which is that if ultimate reality is relational um, and if it's about love, then that ultimate reality should have communicated with us in some way. And um, and if it's about love, then it, how interesting that we have this story, this greatest conceivable love story that we have in Jesus um, that talks about God and love and all of these things on just this kind of um, – you know, unsurpassable level. And it just so happens that there's really good reasons for thinking that that story is actually true. And if that story is actually true, that that leads to the fourth kind of foundation. Uh, and that is that Jesus uh, basically affirms the Bible, the scriptures as divine revelation, as an authority. And so the fourth foundation is that uh, we have good reason to think that the scripture is an important authority. And uh, and so that, that was his first message. And, and as we kind of go forward in this Unraveling Truth kind of series, I just thought it was really helpful to start with those foundations for Greg. Like these are foundations that Greg has. Uh, but more than that, I think that uh, – as a template for these upcoming sermons, like I'm thinking about my sermon, which will be later in February, and I'm thinking that's kind of what I want to do too. Is I want to find what is the the foundational thing there uh, that that I'm going to build around. And um, so, yeah, great great sermon uh, to kick off the series. What did you think of Greg's sermon? You know, I agree with you, Dan. I loved this message one, the way that, that he kicked this off. And I think it was better than 2020. I really <laughs> do. I love the picture that he painted. I, I love that he said, these are the kind of reasons that we know for a fact that people have walked away from the faith and we're going to deal with it. We're not going to shy away from it. We're not afraid to ask tough questions and we're not afraid to investigate these things. I love that. And I think it gave people a really great picture of what to expect, what's to come in the coming weeks and months. Um, it's interesting because I know that deconstruction is a big thing and I'm not bagging on that. I think people do need to ask questions, but I agree with you that like to what end, like hopefully there is an, an end goal um, and it's not just for the sake of complaining. You can literally go on TikTok and there's a whole hashtag um, for deconstruction. And I, I think that um, it's, it's, it's good and healthy. Hopefully it's done within community and it's done um, 
with through the lens of who Jesus really is and who God truly is, you know, because I think so many other things get mucked up in it. But I am so excited for this series. I asked my kids afterwards, the two that were home, you know, what they thought um, I always do. And these are my younger two. So we've got, um, you know, a 15 year old and a 14 year old. And I asked them what they thought about this series and what they thought about the sermon and what they're looking forward to. And and there's always stuff that they can't understand with Greg, of course, uh, but they ask good questions and they understood quite a bit though. And, and I asked them about, um, they thought it was really important. First of all, they thought it was really important that we are addressing these questions and these reasons as to why people do walk away from the faith. Um, and secondly, I asked them like, where has faith been challenging for you? And there's no right or wrong answer, but where has faith been challenging for you? And my son said, um, which is one of the things Greg mentioned, he said, you know, the people who supposed who are supposed to represent the faith sometimes seem very anti the things that that Jesus stood for and um, the character of God. And he just, for him, love is the foundation of it all. And when he doesn't see loving actions or words that yeah. really like jolts him. And my daughter, interestingly enough, and you get to uh, speak to this, um, is the science piece. And she's yeah. 14. And she was just like, mm. you know, that that faith and science would compete against one another. She doesn't she doesn't understand that. Like, why would God make us to have these minds to think about these things if that's just contrary to who he is and what, you know? Right. So I, I think there's a lot of folks from 14, 15 year olds and beyond who are who are and have wrestled and struggled with some of this yeah. stuff. And I just love that we're we're going to dive in and we're going to talk about it and it's going to yeah. be great. I agree. Yeah, I agree. It's uh, I'm glad to hear that from your daughter also that she's asking those questions. Uh, and, um, and I just think it's, it's just so, I mean, cause the, the, the fact is, is that like, and I, Greg said this, you know, it's not like people are necessarily trying to wreck faith and they're not trying to, yeah. you know, destroy God. It's just, we have these sincere kind of dilemmas and these sincere mm -hmm. struggles. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and the fact that Greg said this, that, you know, people who are afraid of approaching these questions, it, it, it makes it pretty obvious that they, they, they're, they're not pursuing truth. They're pursuing mm -hmm. something else. They're mm -hmm. protecting something that, that, that they love. And, and the way I would say that is that it's, it's potential, it, it's possible that some people, if they're afraid to deal with these questions, either they just don't, know where to look they don't know where to go to answer these questions or it's also possible that people are just um protecting an idol uh yeah. that is you know their belief in god their the way they understand god and the way they understand the bible and the way they understand jesus has become sort of an idol and and that's a real real risk and so um that's why i think uh being part of a community where it's okay to ask these questions and to, to wrestle with these things. And which is not to say that you're going to have answers right away. The, the harder the question, sometimes the, the harder the journey to get the answer. <laughs> right. Uh, but uh, I, I just, for me, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this too, but for me um, in 25 years of kind of pursuing this stuff seriously, I'm just over and over and over again amazed at at um at just how like every challenge that I have faced intellectually uh there has not only been an answer to but there has been like a transformational way of looking at my experiences mm -hmm. in the world that um is way better than just an answer and and so for me my experience has been every faith problem that I've had, even though it might suck at, at some point, almost always that has led to these kind of euphoric breakthroughs. Yeah. And um, and so I hope that for people who are, are part of this series that they get to, especially if they're wrestling or if they're struggling with stuff, I hope that people will get a taste of some of that uh, for their own uh, faith walks as well. Mm -hmm. mm. I love that, Dan. Yeah, I went through, I want to say probably in the early 2000s, my own deconstruction. I didn't know that's what it was. <laughs> I right. just knew that I just knew that I was tired. I and by tired, I mean I was exhausted and done. I, I wanted nothing to do with my faith 
or, or more, more, not my faith, but um, working in an organization, like in a religious organization, I was just exhausted and I was tired and I had questions. And I um, had thought that circumstances were dictated by God's will. And mm. um, I just needed to opt out for a bit. Thankfully, I was a part, newly a part of this community called Woodland Hills Church mm. that gives space. And we have always done this, has that gives space for your questions and your wonderings and your struggles and your doubts <laughs> um, and lovingly walks us through that stuff. And so when I said I needed to be left alone, they left me alone and, and, and which was so different for me. Like that was not something that I was used to. I was, it, I was used to, no, we got to confront this. We have to dig deep. We have to like right. hold you accountable. Like they really allowed me space to just and to just 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 be <laughs> and figure out God on my own and through that process I remember saying uh, when we came up to be a part of Woodland Hills actually my husband was going on staff and I remember saying I want nothing to do with it I'll go of course that's important but I don't want to be known I don't want to be like I don't want to do anything I don't want to and um they were like, great, like you do what you need to do. You know, I was a young mom or I shouldn't say young mom, a mom of young kiddos. And um, they were just great with that. And I think, I think within three months, I was, <laughs> I was working on staff at the church, not because of anything they forced upon me, but because of the freedom that I felt. And in that time, mm -hmm. just beginning to rediscover who God truly is and what it means to be a part of his family and to sure. be a part of a community that is striving to love and serve him. And, yeah. and through that freedom came this amazing breakthrough and this discovery of what true picture of God, which is so foundational. We always circle back to it. But that for me, like I said, I didn't know I was deconstructing, but I really was. And what was built out of that was a purer, more rich, um, more loving uh, relationship with the Lord. Um, and he met me in ways I never could have imagined. And so I'm so thankful. Yeah. Hmm. The tough, yeah. the toughness of it all. I'm so thankful for it because of the end result. Yeah. Oh, that's good. It's funny that you say that uh, I didn't know it was called deconstruction. It's like, well, <laughs> you know, my, my buddy Randy and I, you know, we were uh, roommates in college and we were both philosophy majors. And um, and this is back when Greg was still teaching at Bethel. And, you know, we we like every every evening, Randy and I, we would talk about like, you know, free will and fatalism and t determinism and the nature of time and just these big, deep philosophical issues. And we would look at all of these theological explanations and, and we would assess, you know, the, the, you know, flaws in certain theological perspectives and so forth. And it's like, you know, we would never call what we were doing deconstruction. It's just thinking. Right. It's right. that's it. We're just thinking. But you know, and and that's where I, I really think this. You know, now that I put it that way, in, in the same way that a person who is afraid to assess their their beliefs, they might be protecting an idol. In the same way that calling something as simple as thinking this special brand, this I'm deconstructing, that could be indicative that that is becoming an idol also. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I think that that's a real danger that, that it's, it's especially with social media. And, and I noticed yeah. this, this is a total rabbit trail, by the way, but I, I just, right. <laughs> I, I tell you what, I noticed this early on in Twitter and I have a, a couple tweets that I tweeted too, just kind of making fun of this is I noticed that Twitter like I want to have something to say, you know, on social media, and almost always the impulse is to find something to complain about mm. and to be critical about something because that gets engagement. And uh, and I realized that really early on, like we are getting reinforced to complain and be critical. And it, mm -hmm. I don't think it's a coincidence that as social media has grown so exponentially over the last 15 years that we've also seen this uh, exponential growth in deconstructing, which can be very sincere, but I think it can also be a costume for this uh, critical heart and it could be an idol of of being critical and um and so i i think uh yeah it's just something to think about as we're going through these these uh important issues absolutely i think um whether 
I, I, again, posture of your heart, I think is going to be so key. Why are we asking certain questions? Why do we feel the need to pick certain things apart? Now, for some, it there are real, valid, serious reasons. Greg listed many of them. And I was just thinking through, especially, I mean, it's been happening for ages, but it feels like the spotlight because of the news and social media, we be, we find out things more readily, quickly, and in more detail than we ever have before. But there have been folks who have you know, experienced abuse at the hands of religious leaders and at the hands of religious organizations. And there have been cover-ups and there's just been gross things happening. And so, yeah, if that represents God to folks, they have a lot to kind of pick apart. And 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 hopefully their heart is such that they're open enough to rediscover who God truly is and not what was rep- like presented to them through um, fallen people. And there are folks who really they cannot like the 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 fact that there are so many religious organizations and, and leaders who say, you know, essentially turn off your brain um, and just right. receive by faith all of this stuff. And we're like, but what about, but, <laughs> you know, like some valid questions we have, science and philosophy, like there's some valid things that we have. And I don't think God wants us to turn off our brain. So again, right. there are things that people need to like pick apart so they can get to the true character of God. The caution is like, let's just be careful and let's watch our heart posture as we're picking apart, not not like in a critical sense, somewhat critical, but you know what I mean? Um, that we're we have we have the goal of of discovering truth. And for me, truth of who God truly is and who he wants to be in our lives. So yeah. I think that's just gonna be a a, a tightrope balance that we're gonna have to walk throughout this whole series, but I think we're here for it. That's right. Amen. I agree. Awesome. I do want to ask you, and I know that you kind of said this a little bit, but just point blank, when you think of all of the topics that we're going to cover um, in the series and things that people have really struggled with, and and some because of wherever they landed, it caused them to walk away from faith. And that is really sad. Um, Have there ever been, I know you said intellectually, there are things that you've come up against, but you've always experienced breakthrough and a richness from God as never before. Have there been like specific topics or Mm. issues that you've had to deconstruct for yourself um, and and get to the truth of the matter? Yeah, definitely. I mean, for me, like the biggest one was, I mean, pretty early in my faith, this was in the 1990s 1997 96 97 um you know just ha- having uh, my friend Jessica die of cancer that really forced me to just really question um uh, you know is god good uh can can this good god exist in the face of such blatant evil and suffering and so forth and and so that was the first sort of major one and then uh you know being a person who cares about um having a coherent set of beliefs, um, things like evolution and science also um, created a stumbling block. And this is where, you know, I got to the point where I I wanted to believe that Christianity was true, and I believed that it was true, and and I totally made some of those beliefs an idol. And I remember holding on to some pretty ridiculous theological beliefs that that were pretty hilariously unscientific and and having just really lame defenses of these beliefs just because i wanted it i wanted my faith to be true in that simple way yeah. and um and at some point uh i got to the point where i was more secure in my faith and i was able to look at those beliefs more objectively and uh and so definitely science played a big role uh you know the science faith question is something that i've had to deconstruct quite a bit mm-hmm. those are the two big ones um i've i've benefited and this is what's fun about being in community is i've benefited from other people's uh faith crises uh in particular watching greg wrestle with violence in the old testament and uh and like i didn't even really recognize the violence in the old testament as a problem until uh greg started to have this crisis in his own faith and being able to watch him be a role model for how to be in relationship with God while at the same time holding this profound struggle uh, and working through that, not over the course of a week, but over the course of several years, 
uh, and just being patiently working at that. And again, kind of like I had experienced having this kind of euphoric breakthrough that not only solves the problem, but shows us something great and awe-inspiring about God. Um, just having Greg role model that uh, yeah. it benefited me in a great way as well. Uh, mm-hmm. How about you? What what uh, What's your uh, history been like? Yeah, I would say there were so many things that um, Greg brought up that we're going to be taking a look at that I was like, oh, yep, oh, oh, yeah. And so I'm just really excited about that aspect of it. Um, But I I would say, number one, not like in order of importance, but number one, I too, I, I don't know if I was just, I just didn't deal with it. Like the Old Testament, the violence that you see there, I just didn't deal with it to the extent that I just didn't know that it was a, an issue that I had to deal with in my life here and now. I just kind of, I, I don't know what I did. I don't know if I had my head in the sand. I don't know if I just thought, well, you know, there was probably a little bit of like, well, that was God's way. But when Jesus came, he brought the shirt to new way. You know, I just, right. um, I didn't want to go pulling at that thread too much because I was kind of afraid of what I would find. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I so appreciate, like you just said, I appreciate being um, a witness to the journey of Greg and our church and our leaders and our teams of this of nonviolence and trying to yes look at it yes pull up that thread some and and then see where we land i think ultimately for me the beauty and and the the most uh saving grace for me has been that even as we are pulling at threads I don't have to question God. And before that wasn't always the case. I thought if I had questions, that meant I was questioning him. And it was like, I had to make a choice. And that's not the, and even if I am questioning God, he's not like, he's not yeah. afraid of that. Like he's, he's secure. That's <laughs> so right. that's just, that's been huge for me. And I would say free will um, and, you know, crap happening in the world, you know, the, the whole like, did God ordain or do we have free, you know, that has been huge because I grew up more of the mindset of if you do A, B, and C correctly, then the blessings follow. And mm. if something bad happens, oof, what, oof, where, where did you slip up? You know, yeah, right. how did you take yourself out from under his protection kind of thing? Um, and I'm not saying that's all wrong or all bad. I'm just saying that can really like rock with your world when, when, when bad things happen or when you see God fearing good people experience tragedy. Like, so yeah, again, picture of God, that was, that was really huge for me. Mm. And then I would just say overall, just the ability again, to question, to ask questions, to, to struggle with stuff. Um, and, and, and that be okay. Like there was no risking of my security with him because I was struggling. So, um, yeah, that's good. Mm. Yeah, that's great. We did get a question in, Dan, from cool. one of our viewers. So I think this is a great time to look into that. I'm going to pull it up now. And it was a great question. Okay. Uh, this is from Rachel. And oh, I just lost it, Dan. Uh-oh. Just, you know, filibuster for a moment. Well, yeah. I'm, if you want, I can uh, send it to you. I think I could access it. Yeah, could you? I don't know what just happened. Yeah. You guys, see, we are not fancy around no, here. We are we, so not fancy. We are just, you know, doing the thing. Oh, okay. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay, okay. good. Um, okay. Can you briefly compare descriptions of Christianity and God as logical versus Christianity, God as compassionate. And why do logic and, and compassion seem mutually exclusive? Mm. Yeah, that is a really good question. There's actually uh, multiple layers of questions to that. Um, but here's what I would, I, I'd start at the end of that. Like why okay. does logic and compassion seem mutually exclusive? And I think the reason for that is because compassion is a very um, interpersonal 
kind of experience. It's it's a uh, it's an emotional reaction to somebody who is suffering, and co- so compassion is very emotional, and logic is very unemotional. In fact, emotion a lot of times can wreck logic, mm-hmm. and so um, that's why it feels mutually ex- exclusive. Um, however, what I would say is that uh, logic is simply about thinking through reality, and the reality that logic describes is not necessarily incompatible with uh, emotion or compassion and so forth. And so we can use logic. In fact, I, this is, I wouldn't have it any other way. I logically believe that God is love. Mm -hmm. And what that means logically is that God is omni compassionate. And, uh, and so in a sense, logic and compassion, um, are different experiences and they're different ways of experiencing God and interacting with God's creation. But uh, the result, the thing that they both interact with um, does not mean it doesn't imply that the thing that they both interact with is somehow incoherent. Um, Mm. And so I I just think that there's so many times when um, in order to really understand what God is like, you have to put emotion away. And a good example of that is, um, you know, I I know of, and this is going to show my opinion about these different theologies, but I know people who have very, very robust understandings and beliefs about hell, that people uh, who do not uh, meet some belief requirement are going to suffer for all eternity in hell. And there is this sense of justice that that people feel with that way of looking at uh, the afterlife, and um, and people get very protective of that because to threaten that is to threaten justice. And a lot of times, what I have found is that um, people who hold a theology like that, they may have been hurt, uh, they may have been wounded by by a great injustice, and it feels really good to believe that God will punish uh, people like that. Well. If God is actually like that, then great. But if God's not like that, then you have to be able to think through an issue without all of those personal kind of um, kind of uh, you know biases, uh, those emotional biases that you bring to the to the question. And so that's where putting emotion aside and just looking at things logically, I think, can lead us to a a better picture of God that also then circles back and heals us emotionally and spiritually as well. So, and that's why it's great to do all that in a community because I bring all sorts of personal baggage and and personal emotional biases to everything. And, but in a community, I can have people point out that I think that's more you, Dan. I don't think that's actually, I don't yeah. think that's actually, you know, Christianity. I think that's just Dan. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, um, so yeah, it's a great question though. It is a great question. I'm so thankful to Rachel for sending it in. I think sometimes we, we forget, (laughs) we just forget how creative and intelligent God is because like, we know folks, like I know, like one of my kids is uber logical, right. And another one is like an uber feeler. And so we kind of like put those like binaries on God, like, He's either all this or he's all that. And that's just not, like, he's more creative than that. He's more intelligent than that. And there is a that's marriage right. of those things. But I do agree. I think sometimes we do, especially if we're feeling passionate, like we passionately need to defend something. If we know, like, you know, what like riles you up, you know, what hurt, like, and if, and if that's the case, if you're ever going to hope to see another perspective or another side, you have to be willing to tamper that a little bit. I'm not saying don't be you, but just recognize, okay, this is something I'm really passionate about. This is something I believe strongly. Um, I feel like I'm right in this and everyone else is wrong if they feel differently. However, because I value living in community and because I value the the possibility that I could not be seeing something I want to hear, That's right. I want to hear from others who see it differently. And so that does take a bit of humility and it does take a bit of like recognizing who I am and saying, okay, I'm going to not allow myself to get riled up about this so that I can engage someone um, who has a different perspective. And I think that's, that's really right. important to have those people in your life, like to not just be in, you know, a silo of, of um, same thinkers and believers, mm-hmm. but I think it's really good. And again, don't be threatened by that because God certainly isn't. That's right. 
Yep. Okay. Amen. Amen. Well, Dan, I, I do think we have talked a lot about what we're excited about coming up. And I feel like we've talked really well about what we heard and, and kind of why we're doing this series. And so that really just leads me to the part of our show, which we lovingly refer to as nugget time. Woohoo! Nugget time. Yay. And as you are preparing your nugget, Dan, I have to say to you, <laughs> this is a total rabbit trail, but I have to say to you, I think I've told you before how my kids have said, Dan looks like Hawkeye, right? Like yeah, I've told you this before. Right. Yeah. I now have confirmation, Dan, because someone <laughs> who was in service locally came up to me and they were like, hey, so Dan's not out of town, but you guys are still doing newscasts, right? I'm like, yep, every week. He's like, great. Tell him every time I see him, I think that guy looks like Hawkeye. So there you go. And I will say it's probably good that you're down in Florida and not here having to snow plow because <laughs> yeah. he got you <laughs> I mean, damn. Yeah. So you're yeah. uh, you actually you're following the spirit there. You're keeping yourself well, safe. My my hope is that um, the Marvel movie studios will reach out to me to play Hawkeye yes. if he needs more recovery time. Yeah. I would be happy to do that as long as it's after my sermon in February. I'm, okay. I'm happy to participate. In that, I think it would be a bump in pay, also, uh, to to do that. So a little bit, maybe, uh, yeah. maybe just a little bit. I, so, I don't uh, know. Um, so yeah. Marvel, just wait until you know he got he has a big sermon coming up, and we yes. need to hear it. So after yeah. that, he's all yours. Okay. You know, it's got to be it's got to be annoying for Jeremy Renner also to have everybody tell him that he looks like Dan Kent. I mean, that's just got to get really old. That's you know? that's what I was thinking. He's probably like, <laughs> oh, for love, I'm sick of hearing it already. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to the regularly scheduled programming yes, yes. of the Musecast and Nugget Time. Dan, you get to go first. Oh, um, well, let's see. Uh, let's see what what uh, what would the a good nugget be for this? I guess here's what I would say is, um, you know, uh, one thing that I've noticed in my own kind of wrestling with faith is that I'll get like fixated on a, a problem, like like a, a a source of doubt. There's the source of doubt that kind of um, just kind of takes center stage on my radar, on my kind of viewing screen in my mind. And um, and it just like it, well, it, it kind of fills me with doubt. And what happens is that mm -hmm. a lot of times that will get like really bright in my thinking and it and I lose touch with all of the reasons why I believe. And so mm -hmm. it's important as you're wrestling with something that causes doubt to also just like have your your radar on and you you remember all of the things that that fills you with faith and hope mm -hmm. that that uh kind of originally stilled your heart and captured your imagination and to keep those things uh in, in mind and so i guess that would be my my nugget is um as you as you're wrestling with your doubts um always remember your faiths <laughs> mm. <laughs> i like that dan actually my nugget piggybacks onto yours and i'm just gonna sit, tell you guys i i think you know hopefully you know we don't discuss our nuggets beforehand we just we just kind of see where we keep things we keep us. our nuggets to ourselves we know? keep our nuggets <laughs> to ourselves close to the best um <laughs> but my nugget does relate to dan's nugget and that is um the word the phrase that came to me was buddy system <laughs> hmm. That's good. <laughs> and that is like, if you know that you are going to be tugging at something and you have some doubts about something and it, and who knows where it's going to take you as you begin to unravel that string, it's good to have a buddy that you could say, Hey, I'm having these questions. I don't know where it's going to take me. So I need someone there to kind of help pull me back if, if need be. Um, and ultimately ultimately not to be cheesy but that buddy is jesus um but hopefully a, a tangible like real life person in your life as well um i i think it's so important to hang on to him and i have literally said jesus i like i've had to verbalize it jesus i love you but i've got questions <laughs> hmm. i love you but i'm having some hurt and it's making me question and i'm afraid of where this is going to go but i need you to know that i love you and even just like stating that it's like it grounds me and then it's okay to go down the rabbit hole as it were um but even 
even um, more helpful in a lot of ways is to have like a physical person, like I said, the buddy system. I had the privilege of speaking with our ECHO students, our youth ministry this last mm -hmm. week. And we were talking about the, these questions. And I just said, you know what? It's okay to question. God's not afraid of your question. He's not afraid of your doubts. He's not even afraid of you. Say, if you say, forget it. I like, I don't want anything to do with it. He's not afraid of any of that. And his love toward you doesn't change. It's not like determinant upon your faith level. And so when you have that as your foundation, you hang on to that, it makes it a little easier to ask those questions because you're going to get like pulled back to your yeah. anchor. So yeah. That's my well, encouragement. That's, that's awesome. All right. Well, that's cool. Well, that's our show for today. Thanks, you guys, for being here, for tuning in, for sending in questions. Please continue to do so. The link is always going to be um, at Wait, the bottom yeah, somewhere. Yes, yeah, so it's going to be over there. Yeah, I think it's right there. Be over there. Right yeah. there. Musecast at whhchurch.org. <laughs> and come chat with us. Dan forgot us last week. Yeah, that sucked. I, I was. I don't. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There's no shame. Just a little bit of, you just know, just a little, but a little bit. Just a, yes. Yeah. <laughs> But come chat with us at 4 p.m. And if you can't catch us on YouTube, you can catch us wherever you get your podcast. So you can listen to us um, or watch us on YouTube. All right. We'll see you guys then. Have a great rest of your week.